the response at home and in the UK it's like just I don't know I wasn't expecting it I always like the success of the first album was kind of it's not very often you get success like that so to kind of get it again so far on my second record I feel a little bit like I'm a really good blagger like <laughs> Um, but we'll see how it goes. It's still early days. <laughs> Adele might sometimes feel like her success is due to her skills as a blagger, someone who talks their way into something they don't really deserve, but her music tells a very different story. That story is about a singer-songwriter who had a lot of success very young on the strength of her writing and her impressive voice. Adele's chart-topping follow-up to her Grammy-winning debut, 19, is out now. It's called 21. And we'll hear more about that today on Words and Music from Studio A. It's a conversation with Adele. Hi, I'm Rita Houston. When Adele first started performing in her native UK in 2007, a lot of critics were eager to group her with other female artists who were big at the time, like Amy Winehouse and Duffy. But while Adele shared some influences with both artists, her affinity with singer-songwriters like Nora Jones, Suzanne Vega, and Regina Spector showed through too, and really set Adele apart. I first met Adele back in 2008, when 19 had just come out, and I was struck by her honesty as a songwriter, her serious North London accent, and of course, her powerful voice. And she's given that amazing voice a workout on 21, which, like 19, is named after her age when it came out. Most of the songs are originals, telling a story of love gone wrong, like only someone really, really young can. And there's one cover of Adele's mum's favorite band, The Cure. Let's get into our conversation with a different song, one Adele recorded especially for us. Here's an acoustic version of the first single from 21. Here's Adele with Rollin' in the Deep on FUV. There's a fire starting in my heart Reaching a fever pitch and it's bringing me out the dark Finally I can see you crystal clear Go ahead and sell me out and I'll lay your bed See how I'll leave with every piece of you Don't underestimate the things that I will do There is a fire starting in my heart Reaching a fever pitch and it's bringing me out the dark
We're sitting on some couches at Columbia Records having an opportunity to catch up with Adele on the occasion of the release of her brand new record titled 21. Hi there. Hi. It's great to see you again. And you, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Good. Since we've seen you last, yeah. a lot has happened. <laughs> you won a couple of Grammys, mm. you toured the world, you sold a lot of records and have made a lot of fans all over the country from your debut record. And now you just finished up your second album. Yes. It's been a busy run for you lately, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been incredible. It's been a, it was all such a whirlwind when I was doing the work on 19, like traveling and visiting all the places for the first time. Like, you know, and um, it was all kind of quite breathtaking to the point where I can't remember much of it because I kind of had to put a bit of a wall up. Otherwise, I think I would have collapsed from like <laughs> too much excitement and nerves. Um, but the response so far, I mean, obviously, I'm only just getting back here to the U.S., to kind of start promoting 21 but like the response at home and in the UK it's like I just I don't know I wasn't expecting it I always like the success of the first album was kind of it's not very often you get success like that so to kind of get it again so far on my second records I feel a little bit like I'm a really good blagger like (laughs) 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 Um, we'll see how it goes it's still early days (laughs) Rolling in the Deep is the opening track, and it is a great song. And that's Thank really, you. you're welcome. I mean, that is really starting to catch on here in the States. And of course, in the UK and throughout Europe, the album has already been topping the charts and stuff. Rolling in the Deep is the lead track here. And I read somewhere where you described it as a dark, bluesy gospel disco tune. <laughs> and I was like, that's why I like that song. It's a dark, bluesy, gospel disco tune. Were those, those were your words, right? Yeah, I was just trying to, Someone <laughs> yeah. was like, how would you describe the sound of it? Because obviously it's very different to anything I did on 19. Like, and the, the lead song off of 19 was Chasing Pavements in pretty much all the places I went to. It's very different to that song. So, like, how, you know, how have you changed musically? And I was very inspired by a lot of kind of Americana music because I was here touring for so long. So I was like, yeah, it's kind of a bit of this, bit of that, bit of this. It ended up coming out as a dark, <laughs> bluesy gospel disco tune. I love um, that. But yeah, it's just that kind of, um, it's got it's got a sort of, uh, I don't, I'm, I will not be walked all over anymore. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was on 19 and I think a bluesy gospel dark disco tune is a perfect way to express that. <laughs> Do you remember where you were when you wrote that song? I had the first verse um, mm-hmm. for ages. I wrote half of the first verse in Holland and I wrote half of the first verse, uh, the second half of the first verse in America at some point, a cappella. Couldn't finish it on my own because I knew I wanted to have this massive sort of like kind of production behind it, but I'm still limited as a musician. I can only play four or five chords and I'm very, uh, I get easily distracted in the studio with equipment. So I would never have been able to turn it into what it became. Um, and I finished the bulk of it in West London with Paul Letworth, who produced some other songs, but he finished writing that one with me. And it was done within four hours of me singing the first verse to him. And he's like, oh, I know exactly what it should do. And then it was done. So, How, um, uh, You worked with a couple of different collaborators on this record. Paul is one of them. Yep. A couple of other guys. Of course, Rick Rubin is the yes. executive producer on it. Adele, how do you like communicate what's in your head? Because I get the feeling I've seen you perform live a bunch of times. I've had the chance to talk to you a few times. It's all in... Yeah. You're here and you got the whole thing in your head. <laughs> Do you find that you've really had to learn the vocabulary to how to communicate Absolutely. what sounds you're looking for, what you're trying to accomplish? Absolutely. No, because I have a vision. I just can't articulate it. <laughs> like, you know, and I, and I can't describe it. But when, the, when I do something that is part of my vision I feel it and I know that mm-hmm. it's like oh yeah this is this is part of it I don't know what it's part of but it's part of something um so yeah I mean I'm not I'm still not articulate enough with when I'm describing what it is that I like I've just got to go on on, on how, how something makes me feel which is uh luckily is pretty much what Rick is all about it's all about the song and it's all about the music and how it makes you feel it's like I, I had no idea what was going on for a whole month while I was working with Rick. It was so isolating in a really brilliant way. Um, but it wasn't about the glitter that goes on a record afterwards when it's done, you know. It was just about how does this song make you feel, you know. If if, if, if it's believable and convinces you, then it's amazing, you know. And um, Paul Letworth had that same kind of that feeling and motto with music. So I was lucky enough that they were that they they kind of were more expressive through music than the vocabulary as well because otherwise I would have been a little bit stuck. But I involved everyone in my relationship. <laughs> the relationship that the record's about, like it was over by the time I kind of ended up actually working with all of them. But I'd walk in and be like, "Oh my god!" Like, 
<laughs> no, but you need to keep those feelings close to the surface I need because to tell that's them. where creativity comes from, they, right? I need to tell them what I want to write about, how I'm yeah. feeling, so they can try and imagine when they felt like that at some point. You know, and the perfect person with that was Dan Wilson, who I wrote the most heartbreaking song I've ever written with someone like you. And he was just like, I, he was like, well, what is it? And I was like, it's this. That's it. And he managed to kind of get in the zone and be like, feel heavy from it as well, you know? I heard that you settled down, that you found a girl and you're married now. I heard that your dreams came true, guess she gave you things I didn't give to you. The blue uninvited but I couldn't stay away I couldn't fight it I had hoped you'd see my face and that you'd be reminded that for me it isn't over never mind I'll find someone like you I wish nothing but the best for you surprise of our glory days I hate to turn up out of the blue uninvited but I couldn't stay away I couldn't fight it I had hoped you'd see my face and that you'd be reminded that for me it isn't over Nothing compares, no worries or cares Regrets and mistakes, their memories made Who would have known how bittersweet this would taste Never mind, I'll find someone like you I wish nothing It's unfortunate, but heartbreak is one of the great inspirations yeah. for for art it. of all kinds. I love falling in love and I love falling out of love. They feel exactly the same to me. But the breakup is really where a lot of these songs came from. I mean, you had to like 
you, you had your heart. It was yeah. It was bad, right? Yeah, I mean, it it, you get the feeling it was a bad, ugly yeah. breakup. It was. It was just so devastating because there wasn't something to blame it on. It was just we mm-hmm. just stopped loving each other and mm-hmm. it stopped being fun, which is horrible when you can't. Can't. This is why we broke up. You can't be like that. You're like, I don't know what I don't. This doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> you know, it's more horrible. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. compared to 19, where my boyfriend on that record, my first boyfriend cheated on me, and then that, that's like, well, you know, that's why we're not together anymore, guys. Or is this when it was like, I don't know. I just, I think, I think it doesn't like me. You know. But yeah, it was just devastating. I felt like such a failure for so long, and it was kind of been brewing for ages. And no one I liked or worked with, or or like family or friends, no one liked him. It was just, and like you know, like I mean, I can dish out advice until I like s- stop breathing, but I cannot take it. Do you know what I mean? So, and it was just a real coming of age relationship. It was like everything I did was with him, was for him, was because of him, and you know, I think vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it anymore, but at the time I did. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it was just, it was, I had to learn to be on my own again. And that was really horrible. Mm -hmm. Let's circle back for a minute to the song, Someone Like You, because the way that song opens, I mean, we, from the first three lines of that song, we feel like, oh man, she's not making this stuff up. (laughs) This is not like I saw a sad movie. What, like you really get the feeling. Tell us about how you and Dan, you know, worked on that. uh, You and Dan Wilson worked on that song together and stuff. Well, again, I had the first verse for quite a while. I had the Mm -hmm. lyrics, not the, not the melody or the kind of way it ended up being delivered in the recording, but I had the idea for it. I found out that the guy the record's about was with someone. Like it's his first person he'd been with since like in a relationship with since me. And I thought, I thought before that happened, I thought that as soon as one of us met someone else, we'd both be fine, and I'd be like, "Oh, it's fine now, like I can move on." It just dragged me back into like the hell of the relationship. It was so, um, like, it moved me, but in the worst ways ever, not in a good way. <laughs> and um, it was, uh, it was just, it was sort of about imagining, well, not even imagining actually. It was realizing that so he's found what he lacked in me and someone else, and that was really destroyed my soul. And um, so it's just about that. And then I, I was imagining it in my head of just like walking up, seeing them somewhere, you know, at a house or a club or a party and seeing them and not being able to stop myself from going over and making a fool of myself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just about that. <laughs> that's what the opening lines are, you know. I heard you found someone. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a very direct song. Yeah, I think it's my most articulate song. Mm-hmm. And I'm most proud of it because normally I'm a bit kind of beat around the bush and I'm always trying to be a little bit clever and go like make up phrases that aren't real and don't exist and trying to not be too honest with myself but that song and when I finished writing it I was like on my hands and knees bawling my eyes out in the studio going I'm a writer I'm free <laughs> and it's really cheesy but I was when I wrote that song I was like it's fine I can move on now I got it out of my system you know and and I listened to it and it was like, I remember I played it to my nana and she burst into tears and she was thinking about my grandpa from when he died. And I think it's just like, it's one of those songs that's just universal and everyone can take it and be like, oh, that, that reminds me of whoever, you know? And that's the kind of song I like. And um, so it's, I'm, I'm very um, proud of myself for being able to write a song like that that touches people in that very specific way, you know? That's definitely true. Um, Adele, one thing that was clear about you from the very first moment we heard you was you are a great singer, but you're so serious about writing your own songs and that that's really an important part of it. There are plenty of art, you know, there's a whole world of artists who write their own stuff. There's a whole world of uh, pop stars that largely do not write their own stuff. But you seem to be very like, no, I'm a songwriter and I'm going to write my own stuff. Mm. Is that very important to you? It is important to me because it's the artists that I like, even though some of the artists I like never have never written a song in their life, like mm-hmm. Etta James and stuff like that. But... It's that thing of I believe every single word that my favourite singers sing, and I like they completely convince me and make me feel like the song that they're singing was written for me seventy years before I was born. Sometimes, you know what I mean, and it's that believable thing. And if someone like, or not someone not like, but if people ever didn't believe what I was singing, I'd be really devastated and I'd stop making music. Mm-hmm. So it's important to me that I write about my own. That I write my songs and write about my own experiences as a comfort to, to other people do you know what I mean because it's I don't I've tried writing I've tried singing songs that I've, someone else has written and sent to me I tried writing a song about my opinion on like something or other whether it be a film or like a movement or politics or something and I've tried writing songs about friends and stuff like that and I just 
I get distracted, I get really bored, and I'm like, ugh, who is that person? Like, do you know what I mean? I just, I don't know who it is. So it's important for me and and for and for other people, I think, that I write my own music. When it otherwise, came... it will sound like everything else. Do you know what I mean? Like you said, there's a right. million other singers and there's a million other writers. Right. You know? Right. Um, uh, you know, there's this line, and I'm sure you're going to hear it a million times now, that you're out talking about your new record and, and doing a lot of interviews, you know, which is like you get a lifetime to write your first record and whatever it is, like, <laughs> and a year to write your second record or or something. Were there some challenges that came up uh, like that for you in putting together the songs for 21? No. Before I actually was in the studio, when I first started thinking, oh, right, okay, so it may be in about four or five months, I'll start winding, winding down off of 19 and start kind of stepping towards the next record um and when I was doing that I felt really daunted by it I was thinking what am I going to write about air miles and hotels and like <laughs> courier services <laughs> like so really boring that no one can relate to be totally egotistical for a while so I did start getting really worried but then I met who is you know I'm sure this is a naive thing to say and you know like, I, I don't believe myself when I hear 19 so I'm sure my next one I'll be like oh what was I saying when I was talking to you last time I saw you for me, my ex was the love of my life and I will constantly look for him in every other person I'm going to be with in, in the future. You know, I just, or I would always look for him. In, I don't want to be with him, but I'll look for him in other people. Mm -hmm. And then I met him and I was so um, ready to write. By the time that 19 did come to an end and I didn't have to go in the studio, I could have had as much time off as I wanted. I asked for six months off, but within three days I was like, yeah, I'm a bit bored. Can I go into the studio? <laughs> it was perfect timing and I can't admit things to myself. I cannot talk about my feelings. I have to put them into song. And I've always done that. When I was little, I wasn't writing songs, but I was painting pictures. If I like didn't share or something, and my mum was like, you can't have it, give it to your cousin or something, I'd draw a picture and give it to my mum and my cousin and be like, I'm really sorry. <laughs> and it was, um, so by the time it actually came to being in the studio, I was so ready to get this off of my chest. And I was so excited to be making music. I love making music. It's like, it's the only thing I like doing. You know, and it's just like, I just, I became really um, oblivious and forgot in a really bad way forgot about everything that happened on 19 because I was just so excited to be making new music and being in a room with loads of musicians which I think actually ended up cause sometimes I'd catch myself being like why aren't you thinking about whether or not this song is radio friendly or something like that <laughs> and I'd be getting a bit concerned because I am very involved in all the kind of other aspects of what I do um, but luckily I think because I didn't think like that I didn't overthink the record mm -hmm. and therefore it, it didn't become kind of indulgent or anything in it, you know? And I think if you concentrate on trying to make a hit, you're not going to make a hit. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's just got to, just got to happen. That's, that is very true. And you're wise, you're wise <laughs> to know that one. Adele, there's another track on the record that really jumped out at me right away. And it's a, it's a, it's a ballad. It's a powerful song with a great vocal delivery. Um, it just sounds like a classic song. It just sounds like the American South, like Memphis or, you know, like you just get that feel of a, of late 1960s, early seventies. Uh, anyway, it's the song one and only, oh. which is just a beauty. Thank Can you me. tell us a little something about that one? Yeah, that song, um, is the, the, the bridge, the breakdown that is what this, is what really I love about that song. Um, but no, yeah, I, um, um, I got, um, it's the only song that isn't about my ex, who the, in, the rest of the record's about. But it's about, you know, when you always break up with someone and then you always go back to someone, there's always one person that you go back to. And it's really funny because there's someone really in my life at the moment who, not, not, not a relationship with me, but like, she's now going out with someone that she met before I was born. And every time one of them broke up with someone, they'd constantly like go back to each other and stuff like that. But anyway, <laughs> there's someone like this in my life. And I'm just like, I don't need to give this guy some credit yet. Cause he proper rescues me every time something goes wrong. And it was just like, I'm petrified of being with him because I know the minute I'll be with him proper, that'd be it. And I'll right. be settled down and everything. <laughs> and that really, really scares the life out of me. So it's just a song about, you know, I dare you. It's like, it's like I dare him, but it's like I dare me. I dare me to go on. I, be I beg you. I bet it'll be hilarious, you know. It'll be worth it. And then it's just like, oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. It's really hard giving up my heart. Oh, God, I don't know. It's kind of one of those songs that ended up coming really pretty and not frantic, like a nutter, like I just sounded. <laughs> I dare you to let me be oh, you want
We're talking to Adele here at 90.7 FM WFUV. So your first record's 19. The new one just out is titled 21. Um, you're an old soul, <laughs> but a young person. Yeah. Who do you trust? Who at, at these, you know, you've had to make a lot of tough decisions as a, as a businesswoman, as an artist, as, a, as just a person in the world. Yeah. Who's your kind of go-to person? Who's, who's, who's kind of helped you? Is it your mom? Is it a friend? Is it a producer? It's Who? my mom and my mm-hmm. manager. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my mom in terms of everything. Like, mm-hmm. she, I, if I'm ever unsure or totally positive on something, I still go to her. And with my manager, I trust my manager with my life. He's one of my best friends as well. Like, Not my best friend and became my manager, because I do actually think that's really dangerous when you get a friend to manage <laughs> you. But he was my manager and we've just become best mates. Like, And he's, 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 it's brilliant because like, even if I'm being a bit lazy and don't want to go to like a strategic meeting, he'll drag me to it because you know, he thinks it's really important that I understand every aspect of what I do and why I do it and, and why, why and what other people who work for me. Because a lot of people work with me, you know, it's, it's, and it was... I realised that when I was last in the offices here because I've got two labels I've got XL in England and Columbia here and everyone flew in and there were more than like 35 people in the room and they were all directly involved with my record Um, you know so um, it was important to me that, and for him that I know everything about what it is And in the past couple of years, you know, like I said before, you know, you've had the chance to see the world and travel all around and really see the states Um, what um, what are the parts of, of it that, like, you really love? And what are the parts of it where you're like, oh, I'd kind of rather be home watching a movie right now? Or, you know, what are the parts that come easy to you? And what are the parts where you're like, all right, I got to rally and go do this now? Well, it's the music here that really keeps me going. Um, mm-hmm. I just love that, like, the, the kind of the really, like, popular trends of music in certain areas. And you, like, drive through it and you just kind of feel it and hear it. And my bus driver, my tour bus driver, was the one that exposed me to all of that. Um, he got mainly got me into like gospel and country and bluegrass, but then I got really got in, really got into hip hop like really heavily, um, and like just like, r- like proper R and B and stuff like that. So um, it's the music that I love. Which if I ever like the only things I miss is like my my bed, my friends like from home. I've got I'm get I'm, I've got a good collection of friends in America now. <laughs> Before I didn't have any. I didn't know anyone here. Um, but whenever I get a bit homesick, I just sort of start listening just go on YouTube like literally type in like Baltimore or something like that <laughs> do you know what I mean and see whatever comes up so it's just um, I feel really alive when I'm here like do you know what I mean because mm-hmm. everything's so sort of it's like really similar to the UK and stuff like that but it's just like times a thousand <laughs> do you know what I mean so I'm, I'm pretty obsessed by it all I heard from somebody that you're a huge Wanda Jackson fan. Oh, my fan. God, I am. Let's talk about Wanda for a moment, can we? Let's. <laughs> <laughs> I just interviewed her. Did you? Um, 70-something years old. And you talk to her, and you have no concept whatsoever yeah. that she's 70-something. Yeah. I was so young and vital and just has such a great, like, amazing... Uh, idea of who she is in music and what she means you know yeah. she's like oh yeah no I swung the doors wide open for everybody Rita yeah, 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 like yeah. she was very like it was so great to talk to her I love when did you her. first hear her did you hear her when you were touring I heard her when I was here my friend who lives um who lives in New York um sent me Funnel of Love thinking I'd love it just because I, th- I think I'd sung him I don't know for sure I'm pretty sure though that I'd um sung the first verse of Rolling in the Deep to him going this is what I want to do and that song is very like quite wonder. it's just that fierceness of being like I don't yeah. think so get out it's that kind of like mm-hmm. but vulnerable thing as well that Wanda Jackson has listened to it loved it thought it was a Phil Spector production at first anyway I loved that song got into it and I was um, this was the second tour the second tour after the, the tour after the Grammys that was when I got into her and um and then I got into like Memory Mountain and You Bug Me Bad and just like just, I just, love her anyway and um and then my friend who introduced me to her, t- um, he's a photographer and took some photographs for the Observer Music Monthly, which is an amazing music magazine in England, but it's dormant now. But he took the last edition, he took the photos of called Legends and Wanda Jackson was one of them. And she described, she introduced herself before saying, oh, hey, I'm Wanda. She was like, I'm the angel with the dirty mouth. <laughs> And when James told me that, I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She's like my, my hero. Who you can is relate this? to that one. Who is this diva? <laughs> Love her. 
And then, so then I just like started like proper researching her. Like every week, I'd go on her Wikipedia and see if anything had been added. Like there's just something like she's so fierce, and I just love like she's the guy of Elvis. I mean, she's like she's like the rockabilly Etta James. And I've got the new record that Jack White did. I haven't listened to it yet. I need to have time where I can just sit down and listen to it and not have someone calling me or something like that. But um, yeah, I just love her. I just think um, there's an attitude with her that. I just, I love, love it. I read a quote about her where she said, somebody said, oh, so was Elvis a good kisser or something? And she said, no, I'm a good kisser <laughs> or something. Like, that was just. She's great. amazing, yeah. I've got so many, like, refrigerator magnets. My <laughs> fridge is covered with Wanda Jackson, like, Rockabilly Queen magnets. <laughs> Such a loser. I get them on eBay. <laughs> it's like a, there's a Wanda Jackson collector on eBay and I buy loads of stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. Adele, on the new record, you do a cover of The Cure's Love Song. Yeah. I mean, this is a song that's meant so much to so many people across decades, like no matter how, yeah. you know. And and your approach to it is very interesting because although so many of us know and love that song and have known and loved it for years, with your version, you just hear the song in a different way where you're like, oh, wow. Like, of course, we knew it was a great song, but like, wow, I never really like knew like lyrically how good yeah. that song is yeah. you know was that one of because on the first record you did dylan's make you feel my love which was which is gorgeous exactly the reason that i did it that you just said was because i couldn't understand the lyrics when i heard bob Dylan singing it so mm -hmm. i googled him and the lyrics were stunning and i was like i've got to cover this song just so someone can hear how amazing and stunning these lyrics are that's the reason i did make you feel my love so but love song um Never Tear Us Apart was the cover I was doing, actually, by In Excess. I loved that song. First song I learned how to play, like, I just loved it. And um, then we were doing, we were covering it, Rick produced it, and we were covering it, and I was like, I was singing it, and then I listened back to it, and I was like, who is that person? It's that thing that I was saying earlier, I did not believe a single word I was singing. Mm. Even though I'm so connected and bonded to that song, it turned out that actually I'm not, like, it turns out I love it, but I'm not bonded to it like I thought I was. And my voice, if I was In Excess, I'd be like, ugh. Oh, how dare she cover that song? No one's covered it because no one can sing it like he can sing it. That's what I think. That's just to stop myself from crying because I can't sing it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and then me and Rick were throwing ideas back and forth about another cover because I definitely wanted to cover. Just because of the way the response to Make You Feel My Love was amazing. So mm. I was like, I want to do a cover. I love the challenge. But you've either got to make it better than the original or you've got to completely make a new song out of it. And then um, Smokey Hormel, who's one of the guitarists that played on the songs that I did with Rick, he was like, oh, what about Love Song? You remember we did it with Barbara? And I was like, oh, who, who's Barbara? They're like, oh, Barbara Streisand. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then Rick was going to do a record, a Boston Over Covers record of Barbara Streisand. And Smokey um, had, with, I didn't say Barbara Streisand, I didn't say Barbara then, did I? I don't know Barbara. So Barbara Streisand, not Barbara. Sorry. <laughs> I thought I said Barbara then. I was like, oh my God. Anyway, and then Smokey um, had rearranged it, Bossa Nova style. Well, not like Girl From Ipanema, but sort of like mm -hmm. a tinge of Bossa Nova. And they played it and I was so emotional because I was so homesick and stuff like that. And my first show I saw was The Cure. I was three years old. And it was in North London in a park with my mum. And like my mum is obsessed with The Cure. And it was just like, it just... It just any other day, if someone had suggested me to sing a Cure song, I probably would have said no. But right at that moment in time, I was like, absolutely. And then we just started jamming it, and what it and the, like, what we were jamming became the song, like became the recording. Um, but it's just, yeah, I mean, it's it's just so relevant them lyrics, especially doing what I do. Like, do you know what I mean, you're away a lot, and you miss people, and it really is like con everything's by email, and things can be misconstrued and like like read wrong and stuff like that. And it's like whatever thing, anything I say is not what you think I'm saying. And you know, however long I'm away, I'm always gonna love you. Please don't think that because I'm not there doesn't mean I don't love you. So at that moment in time, it was just like that song just summed up my entire life. And then it, I just loved the recording. It's like a musical avatar. It's like it's like surround sound. There's like bits of percussion. It's just a total Rick recording. It's the reason I worked with Rick. So brilliant, yeah. We're talking to Adele here at 90.7 FM WFUV. Uh, it's great to get a minute to sit down and, and spend some time with you. I guess you got a busy year ahead, a busy summer. Yeah. You're going to be running around doing all the festivals and stuff. I don't do festivals. Right. They scare the life out of me, festivals. Yeah. I like going to them, but the prospect of performing at a I festival think... makes me want to jump off of the building. Honestly, the thought of playing at a festival, just the thought of no one coming to watch you or loads of people coming to see you just makes me want to kill myself. <laughs> Either way. Either way. There's like no way I can be... And, and I've, start, I've always said this from day one as well. I did Bonnaroo. I loved I it. I remember that. I yes. loved it. But afterwards, 
I thought I felt like killing myself just because of the rush I was getting that was horrible and good. Yeah, so I'm not going to be doing any festivals in the summer, no. So what do you think? What do you think's on tap for you? What's what? You just going to be busy running all over touring? Well, I don't know in terms of the summer because it's festivals. So I don't know. I'll probably <laughs> just be chilling out at home. No, I'm joking. I'll be doing something. Yeah, no, I'm just got um, lots of touring because I, you know. Like I said, the record's doing well everywhere this time. Hopefully it'll do well here again so I can come and talk because I love touring here. It's great to talk to you, Adele, and we love this new album. Thanks. I'm Rita Houston talking with Adele here on FUV. Let's go out with one more song from 21. Here's that Cure cover. Here's Love Song on FUV. Feel 
Adele on WFUV. Her new album is 21. Words and music from Studio A produced today by Nora Flaherty. Visit our archives at WFUV.org to hear this program and more exclusive conversations and performances. Thanks for listening. I'm Rita Houston for WFUV in New York.